Let me try to get the camera where you can see <laughs> the spinning wheel and not... There's the bird. Say hi, Merlin. We're in the yarn room slash bird room again, so let's see. Okay, I've actually got a decent camera angle. So I'm just going to kind of hang out here for... Oh, there goes the camera. Never mind. I thought we had a good camera angle. All right, good. Well, all of this uh, camera angle procrastinating should... Uh, give people a good amount of time to discover that we're on here. So I'm trying to get the wheel where you can see it. There we go. It's sort of better. Like I said, I would, it's better when I can do this downstairs, but my kids are still awake. Hi, Susan. So, okay. Well, anyway, what I'm doing is this is how it's good that you always hear to put your bands where they're not as tight when you're not spinning. And uh, so that's what I've got going on here at the Polywog. So the first thing I'm going to do is, you'd see I've got them in really light gears you would never actually use them in. So I'm putting this up on the accelerator back where it needs to go. And then I'm going to put this probably there in that middle one. I honestly can't remember. But it is a good practice no matter what wheel it is when you're not spinning to put them on like the bands on like the smallest gear. Just so that, it, you know, it's not so much tension on your wheel all the time. And especially with this one, now that I've got the accelerator and it's got all the different, the two bands, uh, you know, it's even better idea. Well, what are you up to tonight, Susan? Are you spinning anything? Or I am sadly not drinking anything. The weather has changed. I've got a bit of a headache, so I didn't want to make matters worse. But uh, what's everybody up to tonight? Hi, bird. Okay, let's see if I've got this back where I want it. Yep. That looks right. Well, what I'm working on tonight is, this is what it's going to end up being. It is a uh, gradient style. I dyed it. It was, first I made like little bats out of them. <laughs> and uh, then I dyed them in uh, these different gradient colors. And I've got some uh, continental, trying to learn, con continental knitting is how I knit. And I, I think it's the easiest. Apparently... From what I've read. Um, so yeah, we're going to end up with this cool like gradient effect. What I have heard about Continental versus English was the English was the more like proper in the parlor sort of uh, knitting. You know, and it looked all fancy because you're like throwing your, I don't even know what you're doing. You're somehow doing something fancy with your yarn. And Continental knitting was more of like the poor Irish washerwoman style of knitting <laughs> because, um, you know, that you were just trying to kind of like knit quickly and efficiently. You weren't trying to impress anybody because you had like 18 babies you were trying to make socks for or something. So uh, Continental knitting is what I learned on. And okay, so now that I've got this going again, what uh, I've already, I started with the white so the white's already been spun in here, or it was a lamb's wool, so it's really fuzzy. And you have to listen to him talk. But it was a really kind of like short, fuzzy, and it even actually has a little bit of debris in it. I'm kind of picking out as I go. Um, short, fuzzy fiber, and then I blended some Angora Rabbit in with it. But it's definitely, this is going to be kind of a unique yarn, because since the lamb's wool is kind of short and fuzzy, <laughs> like the yarn is also kind of squishy and fuzzy. So uh, I've already spun, I started with like the natural color first, and I've just been spinning, I kind of divided it into piles, which I need to redo. The darkest stuff in the black one pile that I'm going to spin last, and now I'm on kind of the middle pink pile. And it all went into a bag, so okay, yeah, I think this looks sort of like the middle pink pile. So, um, but that's what I did to get this yarn, is I just started with the white first, so it's already on here, and then I tried to gradually use, you know, a little bit more pink, a little bit more pink, and then ended with this uh, darkest pink. And uh, this is for my new collection that's coming up, so like I said, y'all are getting to see stuff a little bit faster, sooner here. But I'm really excited about these, they're in gemstone colors, so this one is the rose quartz, obviously. And then I've got a yellow one, which is citrine, and then a pretty turquoisey one. So if anybody has any spinning questions or yarn questions uh, or comments about life, let me know. And uh, that's it. this is the polywog, and it is getting a little bit fuller on this four ounce bobbin, so you'll see me move the pegs. That one's still good pretty often. The fuller these little bobbins, I imagine it's the same thing for any wheel get. You want to move the pegs, you know, more often or turn up the tension a little bit. 
you may see me do that, but oh, there's kind of a bump. Go in and debump it. But yeah, no, we've had crazy weather here. It's like, it was really, really cold and nasty. We're, like I said, I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee in the Smoky Mountains, which is usually really pretty, but it's been really cold. And then it had kind of gotten warmer. And we've had like another cold front come through. It's supposed to snow again tonight. Um, so I'm hoping my husband gets home soon. And uh, yeah, anytime we get like big weather fronts come through, I usually end up with headaches. Okay, so you see, this is getting a little bit curlier than I want. So I'm going to, that's the other thing with these smaller wheels, is you do kind of want to turn up the tension a little bit as, uh, you know, the bobbin fills up. And also with different wheels, um, especially I feel like the smaller ones, like I said, this one's a spin illusion, but I think with any smaller little wheel, some wheels, especially the Irish tension wheels, really have a lot of pull, which I liked, but they it really like pulls the yarn out of your hand and that keeps it from getting too twisty. If you've got a wheel that's a lighter tension, as you see, it's taking it out of my hand, but it's not like yanking it out of my hand. So that's one thing, like I said, as a dealer, sometimes people I hear will be talking about these little polywogs of they're like, oh, it's getting so twisty, it's getting so twisty. You can really either end up turning the tension up if you want it to really take it out of your hands or what they recommend, and like I said, I imagine this would be true for many different wheels, is you're kind of, see how I'm kind of feeding it into the wheel? I'm kind of, I'm drafting back and then walking it up. <laughs> And that way it's still feeding into the wheel so it's not getting too overly twisty like out here in my hand. But I'm not expecting this little wheel to be like, you know, really jerking it out of my hands like I would with like my King Bee or a bigger wheel. So I think that's been sort of a uh, soapbox I've been wanting to soapbox about <laughs> for a while. Is like I said, just in, I'm in a lot of spinning forums and stuff. I'll see people complaining about on smaller wheels of, oh, it's not working right or, oh, it's broken or, you know, and I think it's just if you're used to working on a bigger wheel or a more powerful wheel, for any sort of a smaller wheel, I mean, you got to cut it a little bit of slack, <laughs> you know, and it gets, uh, you know, the wheel's only so big, the bobbin's only so big, you're going to need to kind of you know, either treadle your feet slower so you don't get too much twist up in here, or uh, like I said, I always compare it to walking a dog, kind of walk the fiber up into the wheel that way. So uh, like I said, I think that might help some people. And I mean, every wheel is different. I remember, uh, like I said, the Lewitt that I used to have, if I tried to spin on that now, I'd probably it'd have like one big foot pedal over here. I probably wouldn't know what I was doing on that now. Any time you go from like your wheel to somebody else's wheel, or um, you get a new wheel, like I'd say you probably need to reserve any sort of major judgment <laughs> until you've been spinning on it and played with the tension and the gears for at least a couple days or, you know, maybe a couple yarn projects before you, you know, start making any harsh judgments on uh, that particular wheel. But I mean, I feel like this one's taken it just fine. Um, and I have slowed my feet down a little bit just to keep it from getting overly twisty. I don't know, our Spinners Guild meeting in Knoxville, we have an excellent Spinners Guild, um, is this Saturday, and I'm taking one of my good friends with me who is a knitter, but she's never been around spinning, and she's coming up from Florida to visit, so um, I know she's going to be freezing cold, but <laughs> it should be fun, though. She's going to be in, like, a room full of people with spinning wheels, like, every different type of spinning wheel. So if you live, even if, like I said, even if you're just a knitter, we have people that just come and knit at our Spinner's Guild. If there's any sort of uh, Spinner's Guild near where you live and you're remotely interested in the fiber arts, it has been just a tremendous, uh, you know, resource and just a, a great experience. It meets once a month. So, uh, you know, if you're having trouble finding something, I, I'm the webmaster for hours. I might be able to help you find something in your area if you're in the States. So, you know, feel free to email me. My email is always uh, Aaron at craftyhousewifeyarns.com with any sort of, like, questions like that. And I will do my best to uh, track down some answers for you. But, uh, yeah, I don't have too much more going on tonight. So, anybody have any questions? Comments? Concerns? What's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> All right. Well, I don't... Uh, I don't have too much more going on, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I got to go check on the kids. Uh, husband's been working late. 
But I hope y'all are having a good evening and are looking forward to the weekend. And uh, I have enjoyed, like I said, seeing my little... I have a video if you want to know how to make these on this YouTube channel. I think it's called something really creative like uh, dyeing gradient art bats. <laughs> and I dyed them in like two... Um, baking dishes at my house. <laughs> so it's, it's fun. It's easy to do. It would be like a, my kids like to help me. So I mean, it'd be like a fun art project, but you uh, do end up with like the different, uh, you could do it. I think I'm going to do the same color technique, but probably with just with my regular Merino and then the Angora blended in because I only had so much of the little squishy lamb's wool. So that will be special for the collection. But um, yeah, so this is like, so this is it in the pink and here y'all can see all three colors because you're special because you're on here. And what do I have? Oh, here is the... Oh, I'm about to sneeze. I'm sorry. I also have allergies. <laughs> this was the blue in the same idea of the, uh, you know, it goes from the white to the dark blue. And that's the turquoise. And then this one is the citrine, which is the uh, off the same. And like I said, it's the same materials for all three of these. And uh, I don't know. I'm really excited about them. So rose quartz, citrine, and uh, turquoise. So that's been my little pet project here lately. And uh, you can see, like I so said, this is the little squishy fiber bats that I dyed uh, that they started out as. So anyhow, hope y'all are all having a good night. And uh, I guess I'm going to go hunt down some more Tylenol. <laughs> so anyhow, have a good one. So, bye, everybody. If, you have, if you're watching this later or now and you have any questions or comments, uh, you know, stick them down below and I will definitely try to get around to answering them. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Susan. So anyhow, I will see y'all next week and uh, I will talk to you later. Bye.